tau overflows to one who has disappeared sarah's songs are simple yet spontaneous happening for one who has disappeared sarah was a young man and a buddhist master everybody found that he has got astray as he moved to the path of tantra people came and went away everyone suggested to the king that sarah be included in the council of ministers but sarah had renounced the world so people went to sarah he sang 160 verses to them they all danced and disappeared queen was very much interested in sarah she wanted sarah to marry his her daughter so she went to saraha saraha sang 80 verses and queen danced and disappeared this made king very worried what is happening what is happening why these people have disappeared and why queen has disappeared so king himself came to saraha to ask him to leave the path that has led him astray in tantra saraha sang 40 verses king danced around him and disappeared these are the three scriptures that saraha composed the first 160 verses are known as people's song of saraha these next 80 verses that he sang to the queen queen's song of saraha and the last 40 verses that he sang to the king the royal song of saraha these are three important scriptures in the life of sarah i have taken a few passage from people's song of sarah to explain my point to explain further replete with buddha's perfections sahaj is one essential nature sahaj means spontaneous sahaj is the one essential nature beings are born into it and pass into it yet there is neither existence nor non existence in it forsaking bliss the fool roams abroad hoping that mundane pleasure your mouth is full of honey now swallow it while you may fools attempt to avoid their sufferings the boy the wise enact their pain drink the cup of sky nectar while others hunger for outward appearances flies eat filth spinning the fragrance of sandalwood man lost to nirvan furthers his own confusion man lost to nirvan further furthers his own confusion thirsting for the coarse and the vulgar the rain water filling an ox who print evaporates when sun shines the imperfections of the perfect mind all are dissolved in perfection salt sea water absorbed by clouds turned sweet S- salt sea water absorbed by clouds turns sweet 
the venom of passionate reaction in a strong and selfish mind becomes elixir the unuttered is free of pain non meditation gives true pleasure though we fear the dragon's roar though we fear dragon's roar rain falls from cloud to ripen the harvest the nature of the beginning and end is here and now and first does not exist without the last the rational fool conceptualizing the inconceivable separates emptiness from compassion the bee knows from birth that flowers are source of honey how can fool know the sansar and nirvana are one facing himself in a mirror the fool sees an alien form the mind with truth forgotten soaps untruth outward sham flowers fragrance is intangible yet it yet its reality pervades the air flowers fragrance is intangible yet its reality pervades the air just as mandal circles are informed by a formless presence flowers fragrance is intangible yet its reality pervades the air just as mandala circles are in informed by a formless presence a master can give you methods which will be helpful for this then whenever you are falling into a dream the methods will not allow you to fall or whenever you have fallen into a dream suddenly you will be awakened when this awakening becomes natural to you there is no need for a master when you have awakened the master disappears the moment you have awakened the master disappears fully awakened awakened in its totality but you will still feel gratitude for the master because he helped you but you will still feel grateful for the master because he helped you sariputra was one of greatest disciples of buddha he became enlightened in his own right he became a buddha himself then buddha said to sariputra now you can go and move now my presence is not needed for you you yourself have become a master in your own right so you can go and help others to come out of their sleep so go so you can go and help others to come out of their sleep sariputra when leaving buddha touched his feet sariputra when leaving buddha touched his feet someone asked sariputra you yourself have become enlightened so why are you touching buddha's feet sariputra said now there is no need to touch his feet but the situation could happen only because of him whatever has happened to me is only because of buddha whatever i am is only because of buddha had buddha not come in my life or i had not come in his life i would have not attained to this or whatever has happened to me would have not happened the flower would have not blossomed its fragrance and beauty would have not started spreading far and wide and its fragrance would have not started reflecting in every act that i perform now there is no need but this could 
happen only because of him and whatever has happened in me is only because of Buddha. Sariputra moved away but whenever, wherever he was in the morning he would prostrate himself in, in the direction where Buddha was. He would imagine Buddha would be in that direction and he will bow down in that direction to pay his gratitude to the invisible Buddha. And again in the evening he would prostrate himself and everyone would ask, what are you doing? To whom you are prostrating yourself? Because Buddha was far away, miles and miles away. He would say, to my teacher, to my beloved, to the one who has disappeared, to the one, my teacher, my master who has disappeared. I am myself now the master, but it was not possible before him. Whatever has taken transformation in me had would have not been possible because of his presence and uncompromisable love for me. It became possible only because of his love, compassion, concern and care. So even when the master disappears, when the guru disappears, the disciple will feel a deep gratitude, the greatest gratitude that is ever possible and will bow down to him out of reverence. This is the prayer, this is the meditation, this is the way the disciple expresses his gratitude towards the Master, towards the Buddha, towards the enlightened one that has just disappeared. Thus, in the scripture, after each paragraph, each stanza, Saraha will say, Thus disappeared Saraha. Thus disappeared Saraha. Each stanza is a message in itself. A circumstance and situation comes, you are given a method and then the master disappears. You are hungry, you go to the kitchen, take out the food on the platter and the moment you are full, the food disappears for you. You go to supermarket every day because there is a need and the moment your need is fulfilled, the supermarket, the business place disappears for you. The master is around you like a canopy. His compassion is there for you as long as he is your need. The moment you are full, the moment you start overflowing, he disappears. The Buddha, the Master disappears. This is the process, the way things happen. Sufi so say Master appears, the moment disciple is ready. You will see the supermarket because only when the need arises in you for to visit that place. Enough.